This is Hamp Lee III from Spiritual Combatants. I wanted to come to you and talk about the one thing God wants from us today. The one thing he needs from us today, and that's to be ready. Many of us are not ready for his coming. Whether he comes and cracks the sky or he calls us and says, your soul is required of you today, we're not ready for that. Many times we're, we're so busy living life and being caught up by the cares and the fears around us that we're not focusing on the things of God and we're not being obedient. We're not preparing ourselves for his coming. Let me read to you from, from Luke 12, uh, starting at 35. He, he says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he returned from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, find, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come and serve them. And he will come, and if he shall come in the second watch or, or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye not think. Many of us are not ready. Unlike the servant who was waiting for, the, for his Lord to come back from the wedding, it's almost like maybe he went to the, the wedding in Cana and, and all of a sudden the wine, the good wine came out at the end. And so he's coming back, he's enjoying himself, not really thinking about anything about going back. Oh, I got to hurry up and get back. Maybe my servants are waiting for me. No, he's out there having a good time, enjoying himself, enjoying the wedding. And but when he comes back, now the people, his servants are waiting for him. They're waiting for them, his Lord so that he has no problem. See, he's just thinking, I'm just going to come in and open the door. There's no real expectation, but I don't have to be inconvenienced. So now he's not going to be inconvenienced because why? They're waiting. They don't know what time he's going to come. He's out there having a great time. They have no idea when he's going to return. But when he does come back, they're there waiting. And so it's so good because it's so good for him, for the Lord, because he's going to make them to sit down. You know what? You guys have been waiting all night. I sat here taking my sweet time, drinking the good wine at the end. You know, it, I was about to leave and then the good wine came out. So I drank a couple more bottles or what have you, glasses. So now instead of, instead of you serving me, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to make them, he says in verse 30, he said, make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Because he understands and recognizes the blessing that they had. They waited and watched. They were waiting for their master's return, their Lord's return. And when he came back, they were ready to open, just to open the door for him. It doesn't say anything about feeding them. Maybe they were, but they were, they were ready. And so then the, the Lord came back and said, no, let me serve you instead. And so even if it's the second watch or the third watch, so blessed are those servants. And even if, if someone was going to break in, if, if I knew that, that someone was going to break in my house at 1605 or 405, that's military time, if he was coming in at 1605, then I'd be either standing outside, I'd probably be standing outside. I'm not going to wait for him to unlock the door or break into the door. I'm going to be out there. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? You need anything? What's up? That's how we'd be. We'd be ready for that. But we don't know what hour the Son of Man will come, but we're not prepared for that. And so oftentimes we're not, we're not ready because we're not focused on being obedient to his word. We're not, whether it's oral, he's, he's speaking to us or through his actual word. I'll tell you a couple situations just, just to describe. In, in May of 1998, the Lord told me to start sending emails out. He said, get a, get a, a group of friends and just start sending emails to them just inspirational quotes, just a, just a random group of people. Not a, they weren't random people, but just a group of people that I knew from the church community at large and just start sending them emails. I said, okay, that sounds like a good idea. And so, yep, the Lord told me to do that. June, 1998. So we're talking a month, 30 days later, God comes back and says, I told you to start this. And so then that's the beginning of spiritual combatants. And so spiritual combatants has grown over the years into this, but 
often we, when God tells us something, we'll know that, oh yeah, God told me to do this, but then we're not focused on doing it. It's, it's kind of like it, God is asking us, uh, uh, giving us a suggestion, or maybe you can go do this. I'm like, it's a command. But how many times we, we're either caught up in life that we're not ready. We're not ready to do what he said. Sometimes we're not ready because we don't understand what he's calling us to do. Sometimes we're scared or we're fearful or we're going through a difficult situation. And it's almost like, well, my situation is too tough for me to actually do what God is telling me. So let me first get through this situation and then I'll go do it. But God's like, I know what you're going through. So I'm asking you to do it in spite of that. Because actually, sometimes when you're, when you're doing those things, it will bless you in the midst of what you're doing and blessing others as well. Oftentimes, that's how God, he's done that a lot for me. He may be doing that for you, but you don't know that because you won't be ready. You won't go out to be obedient to what the Lord told you. I remember one year, and I have this in my book, probably a few years later, you know, I'm in ministry and my wife and I are going through, God was telling me to sit down, to just to, to take down the ministry, you know, stop it being in the youth ministry, sit down. Down, minister to your wife. He gives me scripture. He, he convicts me with in, for, in first Timothy. And I'm like, the conviction is hard. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm so convicted by the scripture. You know, I, I don't want to be an infidel. I want to take care of my family. I, I want to be worthy of God. But the, the conviction was there, but not my obedience. And how many times do we do that? The word, the spirit comes to convict us but then we just walk away. We're like, or we don't walk away right away, but we're like, oh man, that was a convicting word. Or even we go to church every Sunday. They're like, oh, pastor, that was, a, that was a good word. Oh, it convicted me. But then by, by Sunday night, by Monday night, Monday, Tuesday morning, we out doing some of the same stuff that we were doing right before then. We forgot about the word that God gave us. We forgot about the conviction that came because we just go right back to how we were living and the things that we were doing. Instead of being faithful to God and being ready, I'm going to be active because I don't know when he's going to come. I may not understand it, but let me take a step. Even recently now, I was supposed to start a church, well, I'm starting a church now, and so we started the church ministry, and so I'm in Alabama, and I knew I wasn't going to be there long. And so I thought, well, okay, because of my concept of church, I started all the paperwork, spiritual combatants form as a church ministry, but I didn't do the 501c3 paperwork yet. And I knew, well, probably it's not going to be here because I'm only going to be here for a short period of time. And so I'm thinking about my concept of what a church is, a physical building, that's how we're going. And so I just kind of start, kept writing books. And so a, a time came when I was no longer, I didn't have that interest, you know, the drive to write books because I was writing books back to back to back to back. So the desire is no longer there. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? You know, I, I was talking to my wife about it. And now, I, you know, God is telling me this transition is coming to begin to start the church. And I'm thinking like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to be here for a number of years. And so my concept is the same. But then I was slack in starting because I was thinking I had my own understanding of what a church was. I wasn't trying to be slack, but, but God wanted to change my perspective. And sometimes because of how our context of what we think something means, we won't go out and do it. And so God was changing how I saw things or how I saw the structure of what a church ministry is. And so he tells me who he wants me to reach out to. He wants me to reach out to those one sheep that won't come to church, the ones that don't want to come to church, the ones that have been hurt, the ones that have been bruised, the ones that are out there. He said, bring my, bring my sheep home, bring my children home to me. Even if they never come to church again, never set their foot back into another church. He told me to bring them back to me. So I'm like, okay, Lord, he put some people on my heart. And so we're, we're ready to start the church and, and we're about to launch. And God tells me, or not, not God, but the military sends me on a 30 day trip here in Texas. And so I'm like, I was kind of depressed for a couple days. I'm thinking like, God, I, you know, I'm trying to do what you asked me to do. What's going on? And he said, Ham, the church is not about a physical building. It's not about this structure. You can still reach people. And I need you to reach people. And that's when he's putting on my heart to do these videos. I've done, this is maybe the 12th video that I've done so far since I've been out here. If you saw this setup, it's a, literally right over here. There's a desk lamp. My camera, I bought a camera while I was out here. It's sitting on the, on the uh, hotel. You know, a hotel has like a, a binder with all the kind of the accommodations and TV and all that stuff. That's what it's sitting on but I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do what God said do. I don't like doing videos. That's not, I don't want to be on videos, but I want to be ready. I want to be obedient because just as he had told me previously, there's somebody that needs to hear what was being said today. Somebody needs to hear the videos. So I want to be obedient. 
And so we have to be ready because we don't know when our time or hours coming. And because we get so caught up in life, we don't always focus on that. It's like the, the cares and affairs of the world are choking, choking us out. Let me, let me read uh, Luke 8 real quick. Luke 8, 8, 14. Now, this is part of the parable, uh, the, uh, the parable of the sower, which starts at verse 4. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read the one in verse 14. So you can read from verse 14 to verse 15, uh, to um, verse, I'm sorry, verse 4 to verse 15. But in verse 14, he talks about the, the seed that fell among the thorns. And he says, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth, and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. That is many of us. There's some other ones up there as well that affect us, but that's a major one because we get so caught up with the cares and the riches and pleasures of life that we won't be ready to realize there's a better future for us. There's a better life to come. And when we compare what's going on right now with eternity, oh man, there's no comparison. But we won't get ready because we're so caught up. Lay aside those things and be ready. Be obedient to God. Be obedient to his word, his, his, his voice, what he tells you vocally, and be obedient to what he gives you in the word. Be ready and stand and watch. Let's go back to, let me go back real quick to, to uh, Luke 12. We'll read the rest. And so then in verse 41, going back to Luke 12, verse 41, Peter said unto him, Lord, speak of thou this parable unto us or even to all. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful servant, faithful and wise uh, steward, whom his, his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But if that, but and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew of not, well, I won't, go, I won't go to verse 48, but that's some of us. Some of us, when we see the Lord delaying his coming, then we begin to, to, to enjoy ourselves, to begin to beat people and mistreat folks and to eat and drink and to be drunk. And we're just living our lives. Don't do that. Repent. And turn back to God. Go back to him and be ready. Follow his word. Read his word. Not just so you can get a word like, oh, I got a word. Good word, brother. Oh, the Lord's convicted me. No, the Lord has convicted me. Lord, forgive me for how I behaved and I conducted myself. Lord, I will be obedient. Decide today, right now, that you will be obedient to God. Whether you're fearful, you're trembling, you're scared, go sc scared. There's a lot of things God has asked me to do, and I was terrified to do it. But I want to be obedient, and I want you to be obedient. Heaven is for everyone. We can all make it. But God is preparing you now, and he wants you to go forth. He wants you to reach the people that he's calling you to reach. Go forth and be obedient and do his will. May God bless you abundantly on this day.